Hello, Albany Empire. Uh, great to be back with you today. Uh, excited about the opportunity to fill you in, as always, on everything that we try to uh, accomplish in the week uh, that we haven't spoke. Um, with me today, I've got Coach Ware, obviously, uh, Assistant Head Coach, Offensive Coordinator. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm great, Coach. Good morning to you. Well, I know you and I, we were just talking before we launched, and uh, I'm looking at a snowstorm. You said you've got a bunch of snow. I guess it's here, huh? It's about that time. Winter is here, and not that I'm ready for it, but you know what? Off we go. Yeah, it's funny because today is opening day for rifle season in Michigan. Um, I never go out on the morning of opening day because there's 200,000 guys, and I'll bet you 50,000 of them stayed up late drinking with their buddies. And I just <laughs> I don't like the idea of a bullet. <laughs> so um, hopefully this afternoon. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's that time of year. Um, usually when the snow flies, um, you know, I think of a few things. I think college football season is starting to wind down. Um, I always think of, um, you know, the NFL is getting pretty hot and heavy about the third quarter of the season for them. And I also always know that we're knee deep in free agency, right? So uh, we've had a we've had a pretty good off season though I would say um, better than most. So another good thing that's happened is that we've brought on some local ownership, minority ownership, to join Mike Corda in uh, with the Albany Empire. Uh, it's Steve and Charlotte Van Schiller who are joining us. Um, two huge supporters to the program. I know they're going to be an integral part of our our local um, push for sponsorships, ticket sales. Uh, community engagement, all the good things that come with that. Uh, really good people. And, and Damon, as you know, Charlotte is probably one of my uh, biggest consigliaries when it comes to running the defense. She, she has no problem telling me what I did wrong. Hey, Charlotte's a typical Albany Empire fan. Very smart, very outspoken, very blue collar. But they're, they're super passionate about the team. I know uh, one of their, their family members is being trained by Sam Castronova. Uh, so again, they're, they're a true part of the family. Excited to have them around. Now, isn't that their son? I think his name is Brady, if I'm not mistaken. If I've seen something, if I'm wrong, I apologize. But I, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, uh, yeah, well, Sam, Sam can show him how to do it and also take off and run when he needs to, I guess. <laughs> so, so welcome, uh, Steve and Charlotte, glad to have you. Um, it's always a blessing to be surrounded by good people. And that's what we, you know, that's the empire way. That's what we built. So, um, so coach, I want to talk about the new staff that we have, um, over the last, about two weeks, but I, I've, I've been apprehensive about announcing any new staff members, but uh, a few have come up and meaning that it's so early in the process. And we've been very patient this year, as we talked about getting the right formula uh, for the coaches room. And um, first of all, we'll start with Michael Custer. I mean, what can you say, but uh, um, just an incredible background in indoor football. Um, and we're, we're real lucky to have him. And Mike's going to be working with you and me as the offensive and defensive line coach. So excited about bringing Mike on board. I know you guys had a chance to speak. Yeah, um, it's always good when you can get a guy with experience. Um, right. There's so many nuances, obviously, in this game that are different than the outside game. Not that an outside coach can't come in and get it done, but, but Mike has been there a long time. Um, Faced him many times in the other league. Uh, good guy, very knowledgeable. Uh, players like him. So, um, and he's an elder statesman. And I think for you and I, bringing on a guy a little more mature and older, I think will fit in our culture and and you know just the way we do things. And so, I think this should be a very interesting year as having all you know a little older staff. I think it'll be exciting and and it'll be fun. A bunch of older guys, full of energy. Uh, that love to win. And I think that's, that's a great start to the season. Yeah, I agree. And it's great to have someone on staff older than me. Thank God. <laughs> no, he, he, you'd never know it. Um, uh, 
then we have we have a new one, uh, James Nelms. Um, now James is going to be our quality control coach and also our equipment manager slash equipment. He had the same role for the Iowa Barnstormers and I think Frisco, if I'm if I'm remembering Tucson, right. Tucson correct Tucson. Um, he's got experience at it. The the nice thing about James is, is that he has the ability to um, make your life and my life a little bit easier in the sense that being a quality control coach, he's going to have, you know, the, the, his number one job function is going to be the prep work, getting us our film breakdowns, getting breakdowns for players upon request. Like if quarterbacks want a specific set of tape, um, if linemen want to see a specific thing, he he'll have the ability to do those cutups and uh, get them to the guys. And we think that that elevates our educational process with the players. Um, the other side of it is he's been trained and has been doing the equipment manager side of it. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to have him have a dual role, but he convinced me um, in our first conversation, he said, now, coach, you don't allow players to cut their stocks, right? And I said, no, he goes, well, I've never had a fine as an equipment manager and I don't want, and I said, you're hired. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. So excited to have James on. He, he's going to bring that youthful enthusiasm and a um, <clears throat> little sidebar on that. James is coach Custer's grandson. <clears throat> For those of you who didn't know that um, kind of a cool thing. Uh, you know, my son helps us on the a personnel side. So uh, I'm all for it. And as your son keeps going, when he's not going to be training to be a doctor or something, I'm, I'm sure he's going to somehow, and he's involved with us every season anyway. That we've been together. So that's awesome. Um, then we have Chris Cripperly. I'm going to let you talk about Chris because um, you've kind of been on point on this as far as the internship. Right. We're always looking for passionate people, guys that, that want to do the right things and learn. And so that's always our thing. And the thing about, about Chris is he's been a supporter of the Empire for several years. He's helped him do some game day stuff. Uh, he's, you know, you see him on some every practice post. Field. Yeah. Right. You see him on every post. He loves the empire. And so right. one thing that we're always talking about is just people that love the brand. And so he's a guy that absolutely loves the brand. He also has been uh, in control of a minor league football team in Vermont, the Vermont Storm, for many years. They've been very successful, won two national championships. So a guy that's ready to step up and, and learn football at, at a little better, obviously, level. Um, he's going to come in and do a great job for us. He, he, he's excited. He's eager. Uh, he wants to learn. And, and, and those are the guys that you enjoy being around, guys that are passionate about the game, but they really want to learn and they know where they're at in their career. And so I think it'll be a great thing having Chris around. He'll be passionate. He'll be there. He'll be on time. He'll love it. And anything we need him to do, he's going to be eager to do. And I think that's that's the kind of intern we do. I agree 100%. I love Chris. I think he's going to be a definite asset to us. And we're still looking. We're, we're looking at another one or two interns as well, correct? So Absolutely. Yeah. And But it's not about rushing to anything. Again, um, the key word this year for the Empire is patience. Um, and I think, you know, it's nice to have the time to, to really get the right people, you know, so I'm excited about that. Okay, so we've, um, we've had an interesting week. Uh, some players, yeah, coach, I want to come play for you. And then you pick up the phone the next day and they sign with somebody else. Uh, some players, um, you know, reaching out to us that maybe aren't the perfect fit. Um, and then we hit a couple home runs as well. Um, and Let's see. Let's talk about them. Um, so I'm looking at our list here. First, we have Joseph Price and Brassel. We talked about last week and Sam coming on board again. That was great. Um, and then we have uh, Demario Marr, um, the DB, the one from Ole Miss. He was at Ole Miss and then transferred. I want to be accurate here to Midwestern State, but had great success. Uh, he'll be joining us as a rookie this year. Looking forward to him. Kobe Campbell, a guy that you had found um, from Duke, 
unbelievable stats at Duke. And uh, I was talking to Colby. Um, and when I was talking to him, just having a conversation, I, I don't know if you were on the phone. I think you were on the phone with that too. And he was telling us how the small town he comes from. Yep. Yeah. Very small town. And um, um, kind of has, uh, I don't know. He's got really long hair, right? He's got long hair and uh, kind of has that whole thing. And I said, you know, they can tackle you by your hair. And he goes, coach, I've been tackled by my hair a ton. And I said, okay, well, great. You know, <laughs> But Colby, uh, I'm anxious to see Colby play. Um, the other one that we uh, we actually officially uh, completed yesterday was too tall, Darrell Myers, um, adding him to the receiving core, which I think at this point, you know, our receiving core is looking pretty good. Um, I like our line, obviously, a lot. Um, the core linemen coming back and, and who we have and also – um, you know, some of our more notable players like Prince, of course, the GOAT, uh, Shorts, um, Sam, that kind of thing. Now, today, we'll, we'll talk about around the league here in a minute, but today is the start of the XFL draft, okay? And you, you and I um, know that, you know, you never – you always wish the players the best of luck if they're going to get drafted, but every great plan, I think has to have a plan B. Right. Absolutely. And um, unfortunately it's easy for you and I as elder statesmen to know that, but the young ones don't tend to know that as much. And um, I think there, some are going to be uh, very surprised and happy today. And I see, I think some are going to be calling us very early tomorrow morning. So but, uh, you know, on, on that, I, you know, it's, it's, it's always a complicated thing. And absolutely, we want every single player on our team to move up if they can. I mean, that's, that's without question. It's, it, it's good for us. It's good for them. We love that. Right. The harder part is there's always that touchy side. To it. There's thousands of kids that are put up for a draft for very few spots. And so that, that's the trouble is. You know, these kids Coach, let me come. let me interrupt you there for a second. I think it's like five thousand or four thousand in draft pool, and ultimately they're keeping seven hundred and like fifty players, something like that. And you that's know. you know, and that's tough to you know for all these guys that that put in and and like you're talking about having a plan B. We are a destination for players to get better. As we've always said, we're not you know we're not the minor league for the NFL. We're a completely different game. However to learn better fundamentals, learn better how to game plan, learn better how to watch film, all these things that you need to get better, you can come get those things in Albany. We have the Empire Way. There's the Patriots Way, there's the Empire Way. So the, the sad part about some of the kids is they'll, they'll put all of their eggs into one basket, hoping to get drafted, and then through the draft over the next two days, they won't be drafted. Then it becomes a rat race. And, and I always tell guys, it's, it's the funniest thing is, I could love you today, but if the right film comes in this afternoon, I'm going to love a new person. And so when you wait and put all your eggs into the draft, what happens is when the draft comes and gone and your name isn't called, now you're on the phone trying to call all these coaches that have reached out to you and hope there's still a spot. That's the trouble is if you're not way above everybody else at your position, sometimes your opportunity is gone. And so not that I, you know, want to tell kids, you know, come to us over trying to be in the XFL, but it's position yourself with the ability to get better in the year. And so it, I would make sure that I had a place to go that could get me better and get me quality film instead of just thinking I'm going in the draft. Everybody thinks they're going in the draft. I mean, that's the ego. Uh, well, I think, I think though that, that the, the thing that really upset me is they send these kids letters. And they say, oh, you've been selected to, you know, and, and I think to myself, um, you know, it's kind of like when we did when we vote for coach of the year and this and that. And you and I have said from the beginning, there should only be like two names on the ballot, not every coach's name on the ballot. Like first you do a pre ballot who makes the final ballot <clears throat> and just leave, <clears throat> excuse me, two people on the ballot and then have us vote accordingly whoever those are 
Um, it's kind of like that to me with this draft thing is that, you know, you only got 1200 spots for camp. 5,000, really 5,000 people you've got their hopes up. And then out of that 5,700 and something are making the teams. Right. And, um, you know, I, I can't speak to the XFL draft and I, I can't speak to the USFL stuff either because the way it was run when I was in it was completely different. Um, but we're not, you're right. We are not a um, developmental league. It's not our job. Um, but I tell guys all the time, if I'm a defensive end or if I'm a cornerback or if I'm a quarterback or a lineman or any position on our field and I can get two hours of film, two and a half hours worth of film of one-on-one, -on -one, and that's really what arena is. It's me against you. Um, if I'm a wide receiver, I'm against that DB. Um, most people say, well, what about if they run a zone? Our zones in the arena football league after half a second turn in the man anyway. Um, and then offensive linemen to get all that pass blocking tape, to get all that run blocking tape uh, is just instrumental. Uh, linebackers, you know, the way you, you know, you're fighting in a closet and, and having the ability to do that. So every position get, can get super quality film. And like you said, the game planning, the, how to watch film. It's amazing. You get some of these rookies and you bring them in and you say, do you watch film? They go, yeah. Well, they watched football on TV and th th they think that's film. And um, teaching a player how to watch film properly, you know, guys like Hollis and Prince, uh, the way they watch film, you know, is crazy compared to a young kid who hasn't learned that yet. Um, so I think all those things are an integral part of um, what we do. And I know you're a great teacher um, when it comes to that. I mean, you probably enjoy that. It's probably one of the biggest parts of your job you love, right? Yeah, the teaching part is just my favorite part. It's, it's all the intricate details. It's, you know, I, I love to spend an exorbitant amount of time on teaching. And so to me, I tell every player that comes in with us, I will make you a better player by the end of the year. I don't care who you are, how good you are. I don't care if you're a Hall of Famer or you're a fresh out, rookie fresh out of college. I'll make you better. All you got to do is come in with the mindset that I will sit back, keep my ears open, my mouth closed, and learn. We'll make you better. And so, you know, that's, and you that's do. what it's all about. And, and you do. And that I, that's one of the major reasons why I've enjoyed working with you so much um, over the last two years is that um, – you make these kids better, you know, at their positions. Okay. So coach, you've been, uh, I've been giving you copies of the transaction reports the last couple of days. Tell me what your thoughts are around the league. You know, I spend most of my time worried about us. Um, so I'm just going to say this. What a nice luxury you have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say this. We are still the team to beat. We're still at the top of that mountain. Yes, it's very lonely at the top, but I sure enjoy being there. I'm sure you sure enjoy being there. And, and again, you look at the core that we've signed. I mean, we've pretty much signed our whole core of, of exciting players from last year. So at the end of the day, you got to watch the empire. I mean, you have to recruit against us. You have to build a team against us. You have to game plan against us. And so I'm just going to say, it's still to beat the champ or to beat the champ. You got to beat the champ and we're the champ. Yeah. But, but I will say that, that I've enjoyed watching the process. I do feel that everybody understands how we do things. And I think you put that as a barometer. I think that I everyone's trying their hardest. I, I disagree. I think they <laughs> think, I think they think they know how we do things. I don't think they know how we do things. Because uh, I made this point <clears throat> to um, a couple agents, you know, who were trying to get me to take flyers on some guys. And I said, do you understand that we recruit starters at every position? OK, we don't recruit guys and say, oh, that guy would be a great fill in. Oh, that guy will be a great number two. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. We want because in Ironman football, there is no first and second string. There is no first and second string. Okay. And so, you know, I'm looking at this coach, Prince, MVP, Shorts, all NAL, uh, Wade, nothing but huge upside there, right? He'll be all, all NAL. He'll be, yeah, for sure. Uh, Hollins, I mean, Melvin is. I think he set out four plays all year. That's all I'm going to say on the subject. Um, the true Iron Man of the NAL, if you ask me. Yep. Ferry and Tony, holy cow. Um, he has to get better at a few things. Um, more in the meeting room and on the film room. Because his physical abilities rival anyone in the league. Right. Um Cornelius Lewis, leadership, pedigree, assignment driven, probably one of the best people I've ever met in my life that I like hanging around with. I mean, great great guy. Um, Harvey, again, talk about upside, center, guard. Yes, sir. No, sir. Quiet as a church mouse, does his job, knocks people into the wall. Uh, you can't do anything. Starter, obviously, he's going to be all in AL this year. Isaiah Hardy, pedigree, everything. Got his, got his stuff, flesh, big time stud. Him and Lewis on each end, bookends, forget about it. Um, Anthony Cruz, man child, just monster receiver. Swiss Army knife. Can play Swiss Army multiple knife. positions. Quarterback, wide receiver, linebacker, DB. DB. Right. They can coach too, have our jobs. Um, Brandon Cisse, come on. He's the statesman. The legacy, right? Phenomenal, phenomenal career. Right. Um, Brian Price, um, wide receiver, linebacker, big bodied kid, going to be all over the place. Your boy, Brassel. I mean, come on. Um, Just an incredible athlete, wide receiver, DB. I think he. I think he is going to scare the league this year. If I were to great pick. two-way player that's done it at college, done it at the pro yeah. level, has right. true is the true a true Iron Man. I, I look forward to coaching him this year. Now the next guy in Sam Cashnova, I truly believe that once Sam comes, you know, I'm hoping he's gonna find time to train in between the baby and work and all the things and I know he will but when he comes to camp I'm so excited to see the role he takes this year is he going to take you know the role of a leader is he going to take the role of a teammate is he going to take the role of not QB1 always has the leadership part to a certain degree handed to them what they do with it at that point is is the telltale. Like with Prince, Darius, when I first met him to the guy he is now as a leader, crazy difference. Not that it was bad. It's just tweaked and better and better and better and better. And that's how we, me and you always talk escalator, not elevator, right? And I'm hoping Sam this year, um, with all the accolades and all the loving he's getting and all that good stuff also understands the huge responsibility of being a caretaker to the team and being, um, being a great part. And I'm so looking forward to that because he's such a good man and uh, it's going to be fun to watch him grow. You know, his first year, not so good. Second year, unbelievable, but still, Room to improve. Third year, holy cow, this guy could be the next, you know, whatever he wants to be. And obviously that's the challenge for being a leader of a, of a good football team is that you continue to grow. Right. Having a good season means nothing going into the next season. That's, that's the one thing that young guys got to remember is oh. what you did last year has no bearing whatsoever on what we'll do this year. And so- I, can't, I can't speak for other positions. But I'll tell you a little NFL experience, though. So your first year in the NFL is like being a freshman in college. I, I mean, unless you're a super crazy athlete. 
Um, but I'm talking like an offensive lineman, you know, like your number two, your number three, you sit in the meeting room, you just try to get the, try to get on the roster. You just try to do everything right. And you watch, right. And so then you get this guy in who's like, uh, the number one draft choice at Ohio state or Iowa left tackle or USC or something like that. And you watch him and think, wow, that kid, he really picked up on it. He's so strong for being the first year guy. He's got the NFL speed. He's got footwork, get a little bit comfortable. Next year, you see him getting cut or moved to second, third string, going from left tackle to right guard because of certain things. And it's not because they're not the same guy. It's because you have to stay hungry all the time. Like you have to stay hungry all the time. And I remember in the CFL, we would do our draft board and we would, I would walk into um, uh, our personnel guy, Greg Mons was his name. And I'd walk into his office or I'd walk into, you know, pinball's office or the GM's office and I'd look at the boards and we would have our nine linemen, let's say, or eight linemen, right? And then not below it, next to it was like another 15. That 15 guys that are as good as the guys we got right there. And so go ahead and slip. Go ahead and have a bad game. And you may get away with one in pro football. Two, you're probably getting demoted. Three, you're getting traded, cut, free agency, because the investment is so great. The investment is so great. And we talk about that, um, us being a developmental league for the NFL. We're not. The NCAA is, and they have so many millions and millions of dollars invested in that process, you know. So, you know, and I, and like I said, having success is, you know, sometimes it's a great detractor because winning can make certain individuals be complacent and they go into the off season. Hey, I'm a champion. I got a ring. I, you know, got an award, whatever. And that's, and that's our challenge is making sure our guys don't get complacent because it's an expectation to win every year. And so, you know, we, you know, there's some teams that, you know, they're going to be rah-rah their guys right now. We're winning it all. And you know how that goes. Uh, there's a lot of teams that say that knowing that's not going to be the case. But for us and our fan base and all the people that put into this brand, it's an expectation. And so that's the rise to, to, to the challenge. And our players have to rise to that challenge. It's not just you and I. We rise to that challenge every offseason. It's the players in the offseason right now, getting bigger, stronger, faster, uh, having your body in the right order. So, you know, you can come into camp and, and stay healthy through all the rigmarole that we go through. That's what it's all about. And so that's with every one of our players. That goes from Prince down to, you know, the rookie is we talk about that every offseason. Come in out of shape. Don't care who you are. You to get you out of here. I mean, it's, it's just that simple. And so, you know, it's so true. And I, I had a player call me. And I won't say who. Um, and, and, you know, he played for me before. And he said, well, I'm going to check out all my options first. Now, mind you, we, we won him a ring. We got all this. We got all that. Then I got, you know, no call for a week. Called him back. I said, look, I'm not going to chase you. Um, we'd love to have. Well, uh, so-and-so offered me more money. Okay, let me ask you a question. In, in the time you've been with us, did we treat you well? Yep. In the time we've been with you, did we house you well? Oh, yeah. Did we feed you well? Yes. Travel well? Yes. Community good? Yes. How much more did they offer you? He goes, $50. And I said, go enjoy yourself. Right. Because it'd be easy for me to pay him the 50 bucks. But what do you and I say all the time? We want guys that want to be here. You know, because, hey, let's be realistic. If 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 we had no bound, if we had an NFL budget, Prince would be the highest paid player in the history of football. OK, that's how good he is. But he's backed it up every single time. Right. Um, younger guys or guys that are trying to establish themselves. 
you know, good luck. And the guys that we had on our team last year <clears throat> that have moved on to other teams, like Kelvin Vance is down in San Antonio now, you know, I wish them nothing but the best of luck. You know, I want them to be very successful and 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 healthy and enjoy their time and, and that kind of thing. Um, we do things, you know, essentially different because I watch some of these transaction reports and I can't figure it out. I don't know what the hell they're thinking. You know, if they think the Empire Way is just trying to get a mishmash of all-stars, it's not it. You know, hint get a great guy at every position that can start for any team in the league, every position twice. Now you got a good team, not one guy, not three guys, not five guys, four guys, whatever the case is, get 25 guys that can start for anybody. Then you got a good team. So it'll be, it'll be anxious to, they're all gunning for us, buddy. I love it. Yeah, I do too. We used to have a target on our back. Now we got one on the front, back, side. Right. Um, all right, so let's wrap this up. Um, I know you got a lot going on today. Um, I got a deer with my name on them waiting for me uh, this afternoon. But I wanted to tell everyone, um, we have a subscription service for our email blast with the Albany Empire. And I want to encourage everyone to subscribe to this thing because you get the latest updates, everything from ticket promos, anything going on. It's a really cool thing. Uh, so go to our website and you can subscribe right there. And also, as always, 518-714-2200, extension 101 uh, for season tickets right now. Um, guys, I'm so sick of hearing everyone talk about their seven, 8,000 fans when that would have been a bad game for us three years ago. OK, Let, let's put 10, 12,000 in that arena for those seven home games this year. Um, I know, Coach, we, we talk about it all the time. We just want nothing more than to have these kids have the audience they deserve. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. All right. So Empire Nation, Coach, where are any closing remarks? Like I said, get your, get your season tickets, get your popcorn ready. We're going to be another exciting football team and, and come witness history going chasing a three peat very rare as a fan base. You can say your team's chased a three peat. So come out and support us. We look forward to having you and hoist another trophy this year. Couldn't say a better dittos to all of that. So empire nation have a great week. I'll be back next week, hopefully with some new updates on our roster and anything going on and around the league. So God bless and go empire.